culturally in uh, relation to companies, government, Kenyans have put their things out. Everything is written down in black and white. We need <laughs> you to deliver. And once, if you don't deliver, they chase you. It's the same thing you are talking about Kenya. They have the smaller piece of land, which they utilize fully eh, to produce what can uh, benefit everyone. It's only, the only difference between us and Kenya huh. is like uh, Uganda has been blessed with a good climate. There's always food everywhere. Unlike Kenya, where the uh, partly desert, they have to buy practically everything. The responsibility of dependence in Kenya is yeah. much more than like yeah. in Uganda. So if point. you're not a progressive person, oh. you're not going to make it. <laughs> you have to work hard. Yeah. to develop and also help. Do you know that Kenya is ranked uh, third hard working? They are ranked as third hard, or hard working foreigners in the United States of America? Yeah, all this concludes and all this concludes and summarizes what we have we've been talking about. We need to look at our brothers and sisters in Kenya in a positive way. Mm. You see me a live example, all these nice hotels you see in Kampala. Eh? Not even in Kampala, even outside Kampala, like those good safaris. These people are employing Kenyans because they don't want to be let down. Love him. So, my guest, hello, can you introduce yourself? Uh, greetings, uh, this is Julius. Once again, welcome back to its prize. <laughs> Okay, so Julius, today's topic, I want to talk about, uh, people always say that Kenyans are aggressive, Kenyans are aggressive, Kenyans are aggressive. So today, I want you to tell me as a person who has always gone to Kenya and you have knowledge about East African countries, tell us what's that aggression in Kenya that's different from Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania. So today we are going to be discussing, uh, you know, about that topic. Is it true or no? Are Kenyans aggressive in the first place or no? They are. <laughs> oh, Kenyans are very aggressive compared to other to other countries. Uganda. Yes, they, they are very aggressive. So I have some points here. Huh? I made some research why Kenyans are the population of Kenya have them being aggressive. Uh you know the population. One, I think uh, Kenya has taken into account their population because you know population is a tool. The higher the population, the better if you put it if you put it into good use. So I think they are going to run. The population is more than fifty million, not so. Are they more? What about Tanzania? Eh? Um, Tanzania I'm not the largest. Too, I'm not so sure. You know the population is in comparing to this to the to the, to the size to the size because the first Tanzania's size is bigger than Kenya. Yeah. yeah. So I think Kenya has also used its population mm -hmm. in its aggressiveness. It has used it in a positive way. So their population is being used to propel their development. And I think they've also, it is like inbuilt. It has been put in people that you have to work. So also working with such a big population, you know you expect good results. Oh, all right. What about strong work culture? Strong, I think it's the, like the same point. Strong no, work it, culture, is it different from the population? Yes, it's different. It's different in a way that uh, you see Kenyan companies, even if you go to buy that to their government office, they expect results from you. They expect performance from you. You get it. So by the time someone gives you a job, you know what they expect of you. And uh, by the fact that you know the expect of you, you also work according to the expectations. And in so doing, you deliver. So the 
aggressive, because we are talking about the aggressiveness in relation to the in relation to the work policies, uh, the companies expect performance, and it's not about performance. They expect high performance. So if you're also employed, you have to be aggressive to that standard. You don't just go there and know it's waking up from your house and going to work. No, you're supposed to work and they see what you did. So are you trying to tell me that for us in Uganda, when we go to our companies, we are just working in the hope they're not expecting results? We are not, for us, we are not no, working no. to show results? What do you mean? Culturally, in uh, relation to companies, government, Kenyans have put their things out. Everything is written down in black and white. We need <laughs> you to deliver. And once, if you don't deliver, they chase you. But in Uganda, you know, you've been in Uganda for a long time. <laughs> in Uganda, they would... In Uganda, they will employ their relatives. When they make mistakes, they cover up for them. In, in Uganda, even if you don't deliver, no one is taking your seat. There are very few companies, maybe the multinational companies, are the ones where you don't pay around, like NT, but those are few. But so for them, even, are... in government, yeah, even in government offices, the courage is there. Mm. Oh, you have wow. to be able. Mm. You have to be able to give results. If you are not performing, yes. you go. Yeah. All right. The arable land is 10%. What's the meaning of arable? Arable is uh, like the land you can use for agriculture, land you can use for farming. So in short, they are trying to show you that uh, the country is big, but the bigger part is not used, is, can't be used to maybe produce food or look after animals. Mm. And in so doing, comparing also to their population, they need to feed their population. With the little land they have to use, they have to be they have to be aggressive in order to produce food that is going to feed the 50 million plus people. Mm. They have to be aggressive to produce milk, look after animals that they are going to sell and prepare their development. They are using a smaller chunk of land. So if you are not aggressive, you can't get results from that chunk of land. You get it. The aggressiveness has led them to think about technology, think about how best they can get a lot from the little they have. Yeah, because you see, we are always talking about these Europeans, okay, the Western world, people call it the Western world, that is Europe, US, that these people are hard working. Yes, they are hard working because if they don't if they don't have if they don't work hard, then they are not going to make it. Yeah. You can imagine uh, like the West, they have winter of like six months. So you only have like four months to cultivate. So that means that you, in the four months you cultivate, you need food to eat in 12 months. Because in the six months, you won't be doing anything. So if you are not aggressive, how are you going to survive the other six months? Eh? You get it? Because it's like these guys in winter, if you say like in those are cold places in winter, all the bees die. So it means after winter, you will never have honey. So these guys during winter, they pick a few bees which they enter with in their houses eh? to keep them warm, keep mm. them, you know. Then after winter, they just take them out to reproduce and they start having honey. So you can't do that if you are not aggressive, if you are not thinking how you can survive in that situation. It's the same thing you are talking about Kenya. They have a smaller piece of land which they utilize fully. Eh? to produce what can uh, benefit everyone. But 10% is such a small percentage, even if it's utilized fully, like, does it really give them enough for the 50 million people? Exactly, that's what, I'm, that's what we're talk, trying to talk about. If someone <laughs> can use the 10%, the 10% yeah. Yeah, if someone can use the 10% to feed yeah, the 100%, 
it shows how aggressive, how hardworking they are. Actually, the aggressiveness we're talking about is in form of hardworking. Yes, your network had gone off, but you are now back. Yeah. It's okay. you can What's the meaning of African tax in relation to them being aggressive? Okay, the African tax I'm talking about is the dependency. You know, Africa, we've had this togetherness for a very long time, where you find, even if you're in your family, you are your brother's keeper. You get it? You're your brother's keeper. So even if you're working and your brother has got kids who are not at school and you have the capacity, you have to use your money to help out your brothers or your relatives back home, like in the village, like people who go to the city centers look for work and make money. Mm. So in doing so, because you feel that uh, you have to help that brother of yours or sister in the village, then you have to work hard because at the end of the day, you also want your personal development. On top of your personal development, you are also helping someone else. To do those two things that they go, you can only succeed by being so aggressive, by being hardworking, no sleeping. You have to work because you want to develop. You have to work because you want to see your brother and sister being very well. Are you trying to mean people there are depending on others like so much? Like for me in Uganda, I am not taking care of anybody unless they are my children. How come they have so many people depending on them? No, I I think also in Uganda, maybe it's uh, you've not moved in Uganda. People are here in Kampala. They have relatives in the they have relatives in their villages. It's not only in Kenya. <laughs> it's only the only difference between us and Kenya uh. is like uh, Uganda has been blessed with a good climate, there's always food everywhere. Unlike Kenya, where they are uh, partly desert, they have to buy practically everything. That's why you might not look at it in that perspective when you're looking on the Ugandan context. Yeah, yeah. Because you see the starting point is always food. Mm. Uganda, there's food, even in the villages. When you People are not working. The only help they might need from you as a Ugandan is maybe like paying school fees. But when you go to Kenya, they are start they are look at food, food. Yeah. education, everything. So you see, mm. the responsibility of dependence in Kenya is yeah. much more than like yeah. in Uganda. So if point. you're not a aggressive person, oh. you're not going to make it. <laughs> You have to work hard yeah. to develop and also help. And of course, that one, you know, it's also good. It's our African culture. You know, we've always been, it's, we are not like the Wazungu. The Wazungu, they don't care even if it's your brother, sister, mother, everyone is living their life. Someone could even be a billionaire when you're on the street and they don't care. Mm. But as it's impossible, it cannot happen in the African culture. It's an abomination. You need to pick your brother, you need to pick your sister. Yeah. Okay. I now get that point now. Then uh, patriotism. Patriotism, does it have anything to do with being aggressive? Yeah, it's everything. Because you see, patriotism goes back to the love for the country. Mm -hmm. If your love for the country is good, mm -hmm. then you need to see your country as a whole go forward, develop, and it can only okay. take that direction if you're hardworking, if you're aggressive, mm. even if it means aggressiveness to reach where you want to go, you have to take that direction. That's why you cannot separate patriotism from hard work. You cannot separate patriotism mm. from aggressiveness. They go hand in hand. Because, you know, if you don't like your village, you're not going to be there. Isn't it true? Um, uh, yes. Of course. So, the same thing. It starts from down, goes up, up. Yeah. Mm. 
They have what about their climate being same arid? Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, it still goes back to what we're talking about. Like the, they have the small, they they have the smallest percentage of the arable land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then also being like a same desert, you need to think about. Uh, you you you, know, you you need to be, think about creative ways of achieving what you're doing. You get it because you see like. It being same arid means they get like less rain. So, if you are to do farming, you need to start using irrigation. You need to start using all sorts mm-hmm. of uh, other other ways to. You need to look for other ways of surviving. It's survival mm-hmm. for the fittest. Yeah. You cannot survive in a desert if you are not aggressive. Otherwise, you are going to die. So you need to be aggressive. <sighs> survive you need to be aggressive to come up with all sorts of solutions to your problems okay do you know that kenya is ranked uh, third hard working they are ranked as third hard working foreigners in the united states of america yeah all this concludes and all this concludes and summarizes what we have we've been talking about so mm-hmm. in that sense, we are right what we've been talking about because some of those statistics can ascertain, can confirm what we've been discussing. Maybe other people can add on in the comments, can advise, can sub- uh, complement, and we see how far we can move with some of these exchanges and talks. Okay, so before I come, to, if I conclude, say last words and then we will say our. Well, you can say your last words in any, in whether 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 1 minute, it's up to you now, the floor is yours. Okay, <laughs> okay my last okay. words, maybe just like uh, in conclusion, I think we need to look at Kenya as an example. I mean, the neighbors. I mean the people in the East African community. This one I'm talking in terms of East African community. Let's look at Kenya in a positive way. Let's look at their aggressiveness in a positive way. Let's look at their hard work in a positive way. Let's learn from them. Let us not hate them because uh, because they are working hard. Let's ask them, let's get closer to them and know how they've reached at that level of being so confident, of uh, loving their country, of working hard. Let's learn from them. We just need to pick lessons and we also implement in our own countries. I'm not saying that we are not working hard. We are working hard, especially, okay, like, let me talk as a Ugandan. We're also working hard. But in our working hard, we've also had some bit of small background. Like I've said, even if I decided not to work, I will go home and eat for 10 years without even oh, yeah. working a single day because there is food. Mm-hmm. I have, and some of those things have also made us lazy. Because you work and you don't get it, you go in the village. The only thing you buy is cooking oil, salt. The other food will be there. The firewood will be there. So you can eat. You know, like uh, our president has already said that uh, the, 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 the Ugandans, as long as they have, they get food, they will not do anything. So, <laughs> you know, some people hated that statement. But mm. the fact, he said that we've been so blessed to an extent yeah. that we now turn into stupid people. We cannot <laughs> think because we are eating. Hmm? I think we should, we should be using it as a, a positive thing of being lucky that God blessed us with good climate, with fertile soils, that we can produce our own food, we can feed ourselves. But yeah. that's not what life is all about. Life is all about, life is beyond food. We need also to have those nice development like other people are having. 
We also need to look at those size skyscrapers which are going like 50 floors. We, we need to have this good road. Yeah? So let's emulate each other. They can look at our positives, you can look at their positives. Let's not take the negative traits. I'm not talking about the negative. Let's only take the positive traits and also wish and pray that even the negative traits we have as a group, we can try to fight them. We can try to align ourselves towards positivity. We need to look at these things in a positive way. We need to look at our brothers and sisters in Kenya in a positive way. Mm -hmm. You see me, a live example, all these nice hotels you see in Kampala. Eh? Not even Kampala, even outside Kampala, like those good safaris. These people are employing Kenyans in the, they're employing Kenyans, especially in the service sector in relation like to tourism. Because they don't want to be let down. Eh? That shows you the kind of trust. That shows you the kind of trust the people have in them. So how can we build, how can we replicate mm. such trust amongst ourselves? Let's learn from each other. I think I can stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what you said about uh, Ugandans going home and just sleeping and eating, it is very, very true. I have never like, given it my attention. As long as you're home, you're not sick, uh, the rest will always be there, the food will always be there. In fact, we don't even need that cooking oil. We just need salt, not need to fry. So mm -hmm. guys, thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and if you're still with us up to the end, thank you so much, we appreciate your support. And thank you, Julius, for this very informative video. And, okay. uh, and I think we have come to the end of this video. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, Julius. Bye.